a partnership with TJ Lofton. Um, TJ is about innovation. And so when we talk about what's missing in education, oftentimes is innovation and life skills. And how many of you heard now schools are starting to integrate financial literacy and other types of life skills that will help them in the real world? Um, how many of you remember even being a mechanic, learning that in school? Uh, learning, you might know, see, you're all too young. Okay, yes. Uh, home ec, okay, you remember that? Okay, and um, other, uh, even, uh, what was it? Typing class. Typing. Yeah. Metal, shop. Metal, shop. Metal shop. That was the one I was trying to think. Okay. Grab it. Yeah, all of those things that helped. Well, all of those things were removed along with arts. What was that? Oh, I was the thing about like vocation or vocation. Absolutely. All kind of vocation. But they're starting to slowly come back. And so there's a partner that I've had with TJ who has been just awesome. He worked with me in the Compton Unified School District and continued working with me in the Inglewood Unified School District. Let's give a hand for Mr. TJ Law. Reasons all. Again, my name is Thomas T.J. Lofton. Uh, my background is I'm a celebrity car builder that grew up in Compton. I'm a lowrider guy. I restored a lot of classic cars and lowriders. At the time when I started in, what was it, the late 80s when I was learning, I think there were about 3,000 lowriders, Compton, Los Angeles, and Watts. I thought that that was, I thought everyone had a lowrider, but I quickly found out as I grew that it was just us. So by the time uh, the rap group NWA put out that video and put lowriders in there, it, it broke. Now there's over 10 million lowriders worldwide. Classic car restoration is off the charts. I found out later that California, Los Angeles, Compton, California has more cars than anywhere else on the planet. We sell more cars here, so that's why we're doing so good. That's why we have more auto body shops more uh, paint shops, more mechanic shops, etc. Anything to do with cars. So I started Express Gold Plating in 1991, uh, restoring cars. Uh, in 1990, someone reached out to me, uh, they turned out to be Japanese, and said they wanted to ship low riders to Japan. So I helped to pioneer that error. Then I found, I came later with, uh, uh, what was it, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, just all around the world, people started buying these cars and custom car parts. So the cars became harder to get. So I later became a manufacturer and started making certain car parts because most cars were so rusty. So I'm a big machine guy and like she said, innovator, meaning people said, I want this 2017 Corvette engine in my 59 ship. So now we're talking modifications. So I had to figure it out because the guy gave me a blank check and said, whatever it takes. I want to be the first one with it. And then you have movies who approached me, said, hey, well, we want 15 of these and we want them to do this. So it's just a lot of things that I learned in high school. You know, okay, I want a speaker box in my trunk that looks like this, that's one shot. You know, I want, uh, I want my name in, in the trunk and the material, but well, that was my sewing class that I hated and was embarrassed to go to, you know? So fast forwarding the story, that, is a, that was a very lucrative industry for me, but what I come to find out over the years were, was our college students weren't finding employment. And then even more interesting, my industry was imploding, meaning we had more people looking for classic cars to be restored than we had to actually do the work. So there was nobody graduating from school that could paint cars, that could do welding, that could fabricate, that could, a lot of things would restore these cars. And it was just the guys who were building these cars, they're working on 30 and 40 cars when they should only be working on 10. So you know what that means, right? The guys start disappearing and falling apart. It's like lawsuits flying because of, he got my money. So I had to step out, I had to take the bold leap and step out of my industry and everybody looked at me like I was Michael Jordan deciding to go play baseball. Like, what are you doing? You're crazy, you're the leader of this industry. But I realized early on that we need help, so that's why I was lucky to find Dr. Jackie and say, hey, we need those trades classes back in the schools. We need auto body mechanics, we need all of that to put these cars back together. So it was amazing to me that recently I became a public speaker. I'm becoming whatever people ask me to be for some reason. It's like, oh, come, can you say that same thing here? Can you come over here and say that same thing? Can you come to DC and say that same thing you said in front of those people, you know? So 
I recently was reached out to by San Bernardino. I gave a lecture and uh, presentation to San Bernardino. So the San Bernardino is taking the lead with charter schools. And they reached out to me and said, I need you to come look at something. And when I went into the school, my heart just stopped. They informed me, they said, this is the worst of the worst. We take the baddest kids here. We take them all here. I forget what the title is called. But when I went in there, what did I see? I saw machines. I saw 3D printers. I saw tiny houses being built. By the way, I also built houses. I went in Palmville during the housing boom in 2002 to 2006. I started building houses, so I became one of the, I'm one of the uh, world's gentrification specialists, so I go around speaking on that. But when I went into that class, I saw tiny houses being built. So you know what hit me? I said the kids that were not meant to graduate from college, that they're barely being kept in school, they're being put into these, these charter schools over here that's teaching manufacturing, uh, construction, and development. I said these kids are going to be better off. These are the kids that are going to be the multimillionaires and millionaires. Because in my industry, I started a wire wheel company called Compton Wire Wheel, and I wasn't ready for the amount of business that I got from it. I'm, I was excited to find out, I'm, oh, I'm going to sell this guy 12 sets of rims at one time. But when someone called me from Japan and said, we want a container, I had to find out, what is a container? You know what a container is, right? That's a, on the back of a diesel, 53 feet, you know? How many wheels fit in a container? I didn't know. I had to figure it out. He gave me a blank check. So my point is, I became an owner, a manufacturer, and had my own products. So when that charter reached out to me and said, we want you to come and teach these young people the language with patents, trademarks, copyrights, intellectual property, man, I'm like, I left after 20 something years at the top of the industry, top of my game, and you want me to come teach these kids what to do? We're gonna make some billionaires out of the school. So we need to start also teaching financial literacy how to handle this money. So I could go on and on and on, you guys, but I have somewhere else to be. I have a, man, I have a manufacturing workshop today at 3.30 in uh, Los Angeles. But we'll take care.